It's time for Pro and Prediction. Hello and welcome back to Pro and Predictions. I am Paulo on the amateur side, and of course, I am joined today on the professional side by Brian the Pike Man Moore. How are you doing, Brian? What's up, Paul? How are things, man? I'm not too bad well. at all. I suppose today is a bit bittersweet for you, looking ahead and looking at the the weigh-ins for Bellator 258. Do you feel like that should have been you weighing in? Yeah, look at Paul. I I, I was a uh... I had a good day today, man. We, we spent time with the family. What else can I do? I can't fucking... Yeah. I could sit around and mope around about it or I could get on with it. Today was the first day where I went back fully training. Um, I I went back a bit early and relapsed and uh, from from COVID, but today was the first one back and I felt brilliant and onwards and upwards. So, you know, I'm just excited for the for the card and I'm excited to get back in there myself. So, you know, it is what it is, as, as everyone keeps saying this weather. <laughs> yeah, of course. And I suppose touching on recovery we have some news to announce that uh massage guns ireland are coming on as a sponsor with us going forward do you want to tell me a little bit about them because i know you you've had dealings with them in the past and what their products and what they've done for you and your recovery yeah their products are absolutely phenomenal they um they've equipped me with um a few massage guns at this stage including their <laughs> including their mini that they brought out recently yeah but their massage guns are fantastic i i put it on i'm looking at netflix at night and i have it on me it's super it's super quiet so you, you know it isn't uh you can still hear the telly it's everything but i keep the mini in my car when i'm driving back from dublin nice. and i have it in my gear bag too so it's great but they also set me up with um with um the, the leg compression uh, pants they're absolutely brilliant as well when I uh, after my surgery and I recovered way quicker as a result so they're phenomenal but they're they're massage guns they're the the daddy of massage guns out there they've, they've built a fantastic business and it's great to have them on board here yeah excellent stuff we are going to put up a link to their website and if you buy anything under the code G and G that's G A N D G you get 30 euros off uh, the purchases on the massage guns true guts and glory um we do have to talk, talk about some fights this evening i suppose mm-hmm. it's we had no by the time we've gone by the time this goes out a uh, pfl will have happened so we can't really touch on that too much i suppose for for the purposes of the recording did you see the fights last night <laughs> <laughs> yeah great fights um <laughs> savage but no i i think with the card the ufc are putting on this weekend it will be I think our focus is major for the majority going to be on the Bellator card. I don't think there's much happening. Like we can give a quick rundown, but I don't think there's much ex- anything really exciting happening on that Vegas twenty six card. No, it's been a bit of a disappointment in the sense mm-hmm. of like uh, such, such good fights got uh, got taken off that card, and what you're left with then is is um, the bottom of the barrel in, in a sense. Yeah. But um, look at the Bellator card is is phenomenal. It's their it's in my opinion one of their best cards ever. Yeah. From their early prelims right up to their main event, it's unbelievable. So, um, yeah, look at it's it's Bellator's best card of the year so far. Um, and I can't wait to to break it down because there are there are some crackers here. Here's what I find interesting about this card, the two cards this weekend. So the UFC originally put out a product that they were, and it, it was due to be a big card. You had Sandhagen against Dillashaw, you had Cerrone against Sanchez, and a few other fights on that card that are quite good. In the lightweight division, you have Ferreira against Gillespie, and at welterweight, you have Jeff Neal against Neil Magny. So a relatively mm-hmm. strong card for a fight night card. Yeah. Some fighters fell out, and of course now the product we're left with isn't great. If you compare that to the Bellator card this weekend, and we know... Of course we know there are a lot of fights fell out of that card as well and a lot of changes had to be made in the last few weeks. But that yeah. card is still stacked. I, I think yeah. that's a testament to the product that Bellator are putting out right now. I totally agree. Um, now, but, now, the UFC have put on a, a huge amount of cards so far this year. Yeah. So, you know, um, they have to. that has to be taken into account. And there are, like you said, some excellent uh, excellent fights still there. The Neil the Magni fight, for instance, is is one that I, that I won't be missing. That's yeah. for, for certain. But they're big, like the Dillashaw fight, losing that, and the Sandhagen fight, that was that was that was crazy. That was huge. And for like the the fans uh, for losing the Sanchez Cerrone, that was that was enormous. 
and I thought they didn't do enough to fill that void. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. The, the the main the main event doesn't do anything for me as such. Now I would like to see it as a uh, an opening of the of the of the main card. I'd yeah. be interested, but to see it as the main card, I don't think it's strong enough. However, we're left with uh, however with Bellator, like you said, some big fights. Uh, unfortunately, include myself. The, 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 they got pulled and were left with a, a serious product and one that a lot of people are going to tune in to see. Before before we do go on to the Bellator card, just to touch on a few of the um, UFC fights, um, we can give brief picks on them, but it's not our our show. Is, our show is going to be the main card in Bellator and a couple of other fights, but we we might give a couple of picks on these. Um, you look at that, that fight in the lightweight division and I don't think it's getting enough attention. It's right down the bottom of this card. And when the fight started to fall out, I thought this was just a no-brainer as a main event. You have Diego Ferreira, who's coming off that loss to Darius, mm -hmm. going in against Gregor Gillespie, who himself was supposed to headline an event, but or sorry, he was supposed to co-main an event, mm -hmm. but the fight got pulled, laid out. I think that's a phenomenal matchup in that lightweight division, and and whoever wins it is is really looking to push into the top five or six. I can't yeah. understand why this is so low, low down this card in the state that it's in now. I'm looking forward to him bouncing back. I, I do think that Gillespie will go on to win this fight. Um, I'm a big fan of his of his wrestling, but of his all round game, and it's a great fight. And I do agree. I think it should be the main event. I really, I really do, because again, you think about uh, the 155 pound division is possibly the UFC's best division. And, yeah, uh, uh, certainly it has this. the most stars. Yeah, it does. But those stars are probably one to six, one to five, perhaps. Yeah. And then it's 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 people. Everyone outside that one or f uh, that five or six people are trying to crack into that. And I think the winner is it gets a, a big step closer to that top five, top six. So it's a it's a fight that has big implications without a doubt. For sure. And do you have a particular one in mind? A winner? I know we didn't uh, plan to pick on these, but do you have a winner in I'm mind going, for this one? Yeah, I'm going with Gillespie because the last time I picked for Gillespie, even though he didn't fight, and I somehow thought he won and bounced back <laughs> remarkably and all this yeah um I, I said that he just has this excellent mindset he's a he's a gritty tough wrestler someone who has that experience but also that mm -hmm. that um he's that elite at wrestling that he has a, a solid strong mindset and he'll use that loss against kevin lee to bounce back hard and i think even though ferreras looked great 155 albeit losing to darush last time around mm. i do think that um i think gillespie uh wins and I wouldn't be surprised if he wins by TKO on this. Yeah, you see, when he hits the mat, uh, Diego has great grappling as well. Um, he has seven submission finishes himself. I know Gillespie has six. It, it's a very tricky one for me, and it's a bit of a toss of a coin. But I would just side with uh, Fajera. I think he's been up towards that top ten that little bit longer. I think he's faced slightly stiffer competition to this point. And I think he actually comes out on top of this one in a grinding decision. I can't see either getting a finish in this one. I think both guys are really tough. I think stylistically, I'm a fan of both, but I think Gillespie, because of that wrestling pedigree, will have Ferreira thinking about, is he going to shoot? Is he uh, is he going to strike? And I think that's where he could try and catch him. You know what I mean? Um, mm. Where it's very tough fighting. You, you, you see yourself, you see wrestlers that don't have the great stand-up but are effective on the feet because the threat of the takedown is always there. And I think that's one thing that Gillespie has, but he is quite slick on the feet. So I think mar marrying both the, the takedown attempts and the striking, I think will give Ferreira nightmares. I think he'll catch him and it'll be a TKO victory. Yeah. So we're, want, we're already disagreeing. A hundred percent. Oh, we're going to be split on quite a few of them tonight. I can, I can feel <laughs> it. Um, <laughs> just touching on the main event as well. And this is a fight that I would have picked Marina Rodriguez, but I think that this is actually a five round fight. And it's on short notice, a five-round fight. Is. And here, here's my concern with this. I think this is a massive advantage for Michelle Watterson. She's been in there several times in main events. This is her fourth in the UFC. And she's been able to pace herself over those five rounds. Now, I know a few of them did, didn't go the distance, but she, she's had that experience of the pace. As opposed to Rodriguez, this is her first main event. And I believe it's the first five-round fight of her career. And it's on short notice. Yeah. She's a girl that likes to come out of the traps quick. I don't think, unless she gets a very quick finish here of Michelle Watterson, I, th I think Michelle Watterson ekes out a decision. And I think it's a little bit unfair on Rodriguez, given the circumstances, because over a three-round fight, I would have picked Rodriguez. Mm. I'm going to go with Rodriguez in this over Watterson. Again, we're splitting here. But I just <laughs> think Rodriguez is... is, is, is uh, 
she's young she's younger i think she's hungrier yes she lacks the experience but i think she's coming on the, on the up while waterston has i'm still a very big fan of waterston i think she's highly highly marketable i think she's got an excellent skill set but i've just seen her too many times not been able to pull the trigger and not be up there with the absolute upper echelon the the, the, the title contention uh fighters and um i think i i think you're you're, you're seeing someone in Rodriguez, who just is 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 hungrier, uh, younger, and will want it more. And I don't think cardio is going to be a factor here. She's thirteen and one, one yeah. loss by split decision, um, against a very good fighter. And uh, I think that's Carla Esparza, uh, yeah. Uh, yes. So you know what I mean. I, I that's who I'm going with in this now. The five rounds, I, I, the does play a, a, a part, but I just don't think conditioning will be will be a factor for for the for either of these either of these women. Yeah. And and I hope you're right, because I do think she's a more clear cut contender in that division. I just hope yeah. that making this a five round fight doesn't affect her cardio and that it doesn't ruin the fight for her. Um, I, you see, one other thing about that, Paul. Sometimes when I do make my picks, I, it's obviously you want to try pick with your head, but I want to. I like seeing more contenders. Yeah. I like seeing the top five, top six, blow up that a little bit more. Michelle Warsh has been around for a long time. Like I said, I'm a big fan of her. I think her, her training, ethic, her skill set, everything is, she takes every box, but I just like to see more contenders uh, in these divisions. So that's why I'm, I'm kind of rooting for her as, as, as such as, uh, at the same time. Definitely. And and I kind of be on the same page as you there. I would hope for Rodriguez win. And um, before we get to Bellator, the big one, before we get to the main event, we do have to touch on our picks and how we're getting on recently. And I'm starting to pull away, Mr. Brian Moore. I'm starting to pull away You're from you. You're fucking serious. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, right. I, 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 you can go back and check the the, the picks if oh, I you will, want. <laughs> I will. But my bet last week, we both of our bets of the week last week came in, and mine was a mm. seven to one, and yours was an evens bet. So I'm after pulling well ahead in the bets of the week. Yeah. And in the picks, I'm a good uh, about eight nine ahead now on picks. Shut the fuck! What what are we, what are we? What's the record? So mine at the moment is forty seven and thirty four, and you are at forty two and thirty nine. Hey, wait now, hold on. Are are you including the time where I was not here and Franz was filling in for me? Nope, didn't give, didn't include any picks during those weeks. And, okay, that's okay. I've I, I've fine. had a couple of clean sweeps, uh, two weeks. So I had a clean sweep last week. And I had basically a clean sweep the week before I had a five and one week. So yeah, are you, are you, I was, I had COVID now, so that should be taken into consideration. No, no, I'm it. talking about the week before you had COVID. All right, okay. Don't be I'm salty about excuses. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, right. ju- just letting you know before we make our official picks for this week that the pressure is on. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> I'm going to stop picking with my fucking heart, and I suppose, like I just, just said. So, we are going to move on to Bellator 258, and for the purposes of this podcast, I'm going to start at the main event, because this is probably one of the biggest fights of the year for me. Uh, Juan Archuleta picked up that title last year in a very impressive uh, performance against Patchy Mix. Now... I, I have had Horiguchi picked <laughs> as my champion at the end of 2021 because there was all the talk about them fighting at the Superdome. But in the current state of the bantamweight division right now, I, I don't see Pettis getting past Archuleta for one. And I think unless he gets a match by the, I suppose, October, November of this year um, against one of the legit contenders in that division, I see him holding on to the belt. Yeah, um, you're going with yeah. I'm I'm going with Arcaleta here on this too. Mm-hmm. Um, look at it's a good fight, but Arcaleta is just a little bit better everywhere in my opinion. Um, if if it was a if it was a kickboxing fight, Pettis probably would be a better kickboxer, but he's undersized in this. I think Arcaleta's well-rounded game of him mixing his uh his takedown attempts with his uh with his striking. His excellent scramble. So I don't think even if Pettis got a takedown, he's going to be able to keep him or hold him down. Um, yeah. It's really going to be the winner is, is uh, who's going to be able to control where it goes. And there's only one winner here with this, and that's Arcaleta. Unless Pettis can pull something out special out of the bag, but I don't think he has that power to do that, nor does he have the submission skills against Arcaleta, who's just a very explosive grappler. So Pettis is well and truly against it here. And I think Arcaleta takes, uh, takes the win. I don't think he finishes. I think yeah. he's 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 his mindset in every fight is win every round rather than mm. finish it, the fight in any round. 
and I think he'll go to 25 minutes, probably 49, 46 kind of a scorecard I'd be I'd be looking at. Yeah. Uh, Archuleta does have 11 KOs on his record, but they're very early in his career. He He's kind of become a decision machine as he's moved through his career. And not a boring one either. Look, he's always in decent fights and he's always kind of bringing the intensity. That's his style. He likes to be in your face for the full uh, 25 or 15 minutes, whatever it would be. And if you look mm. at Pettis on the other side, like you said, he's undersized. And his most notable wins are arguably uh, Brandon Moreno. Now, Brandon Moreno wasn't as big as he was when he fought him, but Brandon Moreno and Joseph Benavidez, who are two 25ers, and yeah. they would be so small at 35 so they're mm -hmm. they're regular 25ers they're not big guys at 25 um yeah i, I just feel like archuleta has him out muscled and on the feet even i think he has him out gunned in this one i like archuleta like he does um he does all the right things yeah um he he, he seeks out the hardest rounds he seeks out you know the uh, coaches. Um, he he always mixes around his training. Even like you look at how he set up his next strength conditioning coach. Um, he he's he has Dwayne Ludwig on pads. He's got excellent uh, sparring partners, but he still goes out of his way to find the uh, you know f f more coaches, more training partners. So he he's a kind of a guy that does takes not doesn't take chances. He he goes out and, and he makes it happen. And I think. You know, uh, that's a big part to play as well. He'll be coming in super confident based on the work yeah. ethic and the workload that he's put in for this. And I, I just can't see Pettis being able to upset him at all. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's a great main main, main event. I'm, I'm glad that's a, it's, I'm, I'm glad that the 135ers are, are, have the, you know, have the main slot on a, yeah. such a strong card as well. So, um, but I, I have Arcoletta here all day on this one especially the fact that the light heavyweight grand prix is a five round fight there was a yeah. concern that they would have made that the main event but i'm delighted they stuck with this because they're two legitimate guys um yeah i do have to ask you so going well in june you pick up a victory in june and you get the nod to fight arcoletta you get the nod to fight the spaniard who's um what's what's your route to victory in that one and, and kind of what what are you going to do differently to the rest of the guys uh, to be honest, I don't know uh, who else gives him a better. Like, if you look at look at the top ten, okay, yeah. look at them. Um, you've got very one dimensional guys. He's the guy who can mix it up the best. Mm -hmm. And f for me, there's nobody nobody who has the knockout power to knock him out. Um, there's there's uh, there's there's very good grapplers. There's very good uh, jiu-jitsu guys, and there's very very good wrestlers. So. You, you you need someone in there that's going to uh, threaten him on the feet. That's going to be a nightmare to take down. I think I'm that guy. But to be honest, I, I want to fight Sergio Pettis next. I want to fight because yeah. I don't think he's going to win this fight. And that's who I want to fight in June. That's who I've asked for already. And uh, I'm just, I'm ready to, I, I want that fight ever since he got signed in the UFC. So I really want to fight Arcoletta someday. I know they're not going to give him to me um, after one, after one win on, unless it's an impressive one yeah and the way i always like to try to do it is like okay if arcleta who i think will decision pettis okay give me pettis and i'll and i'll knock pettis out you know that kind yeah, of way yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll show him that i was i i, I finish your best so, uh, result exactly but i think this without talking about me on this i think this is a great main card and i mm -hmm. think arcleta goes to i think he, he 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 retains his title i think he looks even better than he did against mix if you look at the, the patchy mix fight he lost two rounds in that fight yeah, yeah. Um, i think he tries to get a a, a whitewash here and, and he takes the five round yeah yeah um i'm really looking forward to that one then you have the main or the co-main event you have the light heavyweight grand prix the culmination of the quarterfinals and you have anthony rumble johnson and unfortunately, it's not Yoel standing across from him. But he does have a guy, Jose Augusto, who's coming in. He does. He's training with the Pitbull brothers. And if you ask the Pitbull brothers, according to them, he's the best striker in the light heavyweight division. But look, he does have some finishes. He has five KO finishes, and he's on a five-fight win streak at the moment. He did come in and get a submission victory in his debut at Bellator. He has looked mm -hmm. impressive, but relatively green when you compare him to Johnson. Big question mark over Johnson, of course, is that his last fight was the last Cormier in 2017, just over four years ago now. So it's how does Johnson look on his return? And we know he put on all that weight. So it, will he be able to go that 25 minutes? How has he been cutting the weight? And how is his cardio going to be? But Rumble Johnson is Rumble Johnson. If you go before the Cormier fight, knockout wins of Teixeira, Bader and Jimmy Manuel, one after another. And you could list off, like we did with Machida a couple of weeks ago or three weeks ago, 
the notable wins on this man's record from from welterweight right up to heavyweight. Um, yeah, the, the guy's crazy. The guy has fought everybody. So I, I, for me, I think Rumble picks it up, and I think it's a co- relatively easy night for him, a first round KO, and moves on quickly in that uh, uh, light heavyweight Grand Prix. Yeah, I'm I'm going with a uh, a KO in this as well, but I'm not sure it's going to be first round. Maybe it will be. I think maybe it depends on how Rumble feels and how quick he'll want to start. It's been a long time out. Um, what one thing I and, and I never really judge it off how people look at weigh-ins. I never do because you know it, it it's kind of silly, really. Yeah. But he's been out for so long, and I and he looked incredible on the scales. He looked yeah, fucking. Yeah. He looked. More he looked leaner than he did at 170. Do you know what I mean? He looked yeah. leaner t- t- today than he did at 170. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he looks in tremendous shape. I think that uh, I think the only thing that's um, that's a little bit of a question mark in my mind is um, ring rust and how 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 um, how we'll feel originally getting in there. I'm mm-hmm. sure when the referee claps and says fight, you know, he, he'll be ready, but maybe it'll just take him three or four, maybe even five minutes just to get settled in. And that's why I'm thinking it'll be a KO maybe in round two, but. It, he has stupid power. So even yeah. if he hits him, you know, with a, with a, if he's not fully switched on and he hits him with half a shot or something that barely touches, he mm-hmm. could still uh, put lights out. He's just one of those guys with that God gift power. You know, like Mike Tyson, um, Canelo said it about in, in an interview recently is he had that power where if he didn't hit you clean, you were still knocked out. And <laughs> Johnson is like that. Yeah, Some yeah. people got a kid perfect in the temple, perfect in the chin. Johnson could hit you at the like the back of the head, the hardest part, and you're still going to sleep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Deontay Wilder at a time where he, where he knocked out the guy by hitting him on the forehead. So I just think he has that silly power where he will get that knockout. But I'm just wondering how long it'll take him to settle in. First round, second round knockout is, is my prediction here. Do you think it'll take a couple of punches for him to wake up and feel like he's in a fight? Possibly. That's exactly what happens to me every single time I fight. I need to get hit before I, I, I switch on. Yeah. Um but I don't know what with him. It's it's very it's we look at it's been 2017 since he fought. Now it was at the highest level against one of the best ever. In my opinion, Anthony Johnson is one of the best uh, light heavyweights ever. Um, but um, but it, it'll depend on the person. Some people handle ring rust much mm-hmm. better than others. Um, it's going to be it's going to be very interesting. I just the only I can see him doing it with relative ease. It just depends how long it takes him to settle in. That's yeah, yeah. the only question. Yeah, I'm on board. I think he settles quite quickly. He takes a couple of punches and answers back and, and finishes the night. Um, you think he gets clipped? You think he takes a couple of punches? Yeah, and look, Rumble has proved before he does have a chin, like he's well able to take a punch now. I don't know how that translates after four years of being out of the sport. Um, but I, I think he's very good at rolling with punches and he's able to kind of come back with his own intensity off the back of punches because even some of his biggest KOs it, it was coming off the back of uh, eating combinations is when he kind of came forward. And it's when he's moving forward, he's most dangerous. He's not very good striking off the back foot. But when he's coming forward, he's a dangerous, dangerous man. Look, at four years, it only helps your chin, let's be honest. Um, yeah. But one thing I think Anthony Johnson will have in his head that he's been, you know, a, a big signing with Bellator. Yeah, he's yeah, in, pressure. in a big fight versus Romero. Not even pressure, but I feel like that he'll have a point to prove to fans to the new promotion that uh, he'll want to make an impact to make a dent immediately off the bat. He yep. would have had that with that fireworks fight that would have been promised with Romero. Yep. Now he's f- fighting uh, Augusto and I think that he'll be, he'll be looking for a big knockout and I think he will get it. Yeah. Um, I can't wait. I've always been a fan of Anthony Johnson, uh, Anthony Johnson. Uh, so it's great to see him back in the mix. For sure, try and get on. You'll be trying to get on the next card with the semi final of the quarterfinals if he does get through. Um, all I wanted to do was see Romero in the fr- flesh. That's all I wanted. <laughs> I would have nearly just flown in, made weight, looked at Romero, and then just went home because I just I I, I want to I want to see that specimen in in the flesh. You know what I mean? But um, like, not to be with how with how ru- good Rumble was looking on the scales, he'd have been competing with him. To be fair, but yeah, um, we do need to move on to some fights. We're running uh. Well, kind of low on time. Um, next up is one of your teammates, Peter Queeley, is going in against one of the Pitbull brothers. We know there's no love lost between the Pitbull brothers and SBG, so this is going to be fireworks from start to finish. Obviously, we know Patricky Pitbull, and he's coming off that loss over in Ryzen, and he's that little stint out of Bellator where he got the clearance to go over there and compete in that tournament. He went 2-1-1 with Ryzen, but we have 
at, before his loss, overall, he was on a seven-fight win streak. He has big wins in his career. Benson Henderson, Derek Campos, Josh Thompson. But Queeley is one of those guys that don't ever rule him out. And I, I think the Ryan Scope fight um, w- was the absolute testament to that. I mean, he was all but finished in that first round and came back and against everyone's uh, uh, better judgment, came back and finished the fight, let alone win the fight. I think Patricky would do well here to avoid getting into a firefight with Queeley because I think I don't think it's the answer and that seems to be Patricky's style. Um I, I would lean towards Patricky picking up a, a, a victory, but my heart is telling me that Queeley is gonna pull it out of the bag and pull off either a submission or a knockout very late in the third round. Yeah, I can't wait for this fight up for obvious reasons. Qu- Peter is a, a really good friend of mine. Um inside and outside of the gym. And it's just been great to see him put in the work. Um, we were both on fire in the gym. Um, and uh, he, he's been able to carry that on. Like um, I've seen, he, he was watching my spars. I was watching him. So we could give each other feedback. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever seen him better. Um, really. And he's, he had some very tricky spars against some very tricky guys, but always looked really, really impressive. And I think that it, it I think it's, it's funny because he said it in an interview that, um, the last four weeks, basically, he's been training by himself. Yeah. Um, because of of, of you know uh, teammates like myself getting COVID, etc. Yeah. And um, but he said he feels fresh for the first time ever getting into a fight, and there's a lot to be said for that. A lot to be said. How many times you've seen guys even taking short notice fights because they feel fresh going in and, and, and doing amazing? He's put in an incredible camp early on, uh, and with three to four weeks left, he's been able to taper it down, wind down, yeah wind down but if you think about it this 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 fight has been you know uh it's 18 months in the making yeah exactly so he's had the tricky pitbull in his crosshairs for 18 months knowing that it's the biggest fight of his of his life and um i think that he goes out and he and he and he does it and i think stylistically and it's it's really a great fight for peter patricky is really well he's a very well-versed veteran very skilled everywhere he has hot and, hot and cold nights. I have to say, sometimes yeah. he looks really good. Other times, there's a lot to be uh, desired. Um, but whichever Patricky turns up, he has the toughest fella pound for pound in the world, in my opinion, ahead of, in front of him. And whatever whatever he dishes out to Peter, I think Peter will be able to to dish back out as much, but take a lot more. And I don't like sometimes fights. Uh, when you have guys at such skill level, and it really comes down to sometimes who wants it more, who's yeah, tougher. Yeah, yeah. And who'll opinion, break first and I don't think yeah. there's any breaking Peter Queeley zero <laughs> zero zero um, so I think that's what it'll come down to and I think I think it'll be a firefight for 15 minutes I don't think there's going to be uh, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be finishing it because the two guys are so tough Patricky's tough Peter's the toughest probably <laughs> in the sport um, and with that I just think it's going to be a bloody 15 minutes and the bloodier and longer it goes the better it is for Peter too for sure uh, moving on to the Michael Venom Page and Derek Anderson fight which is the last fight on that main card um, phenomenal one that got put together quite late and I I was speaking to Derek Anderson about this time last year and before uh, rankings were ever talked about or discussed he, he what we talked about was there the lack of rankings at uh, in Bellator and how it would give a clearer picture and he's been trying to get the page fight or a daily fight for two three years now he matched against them a couple of times but they fell through for whatever reason so I'm really pulling for Derek Anderson in this one he's a good guy but he's going in against Venom Page and Venom Page does what he does Um, mm-hmm. I think it could go one of two ways Anderson is very tricky and he's a good striker I, I think Anderson will be the one obviously engaging in the grappling but I, I think if he doesn't get the, the fight to the mat early I think Page will take him out in the first it's a great fucking fight, I, I, and I think a lot of people are 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 overlooking it. They just see Venom Page because of how talented he is, mm-hmm. because of all what he can produce in the cage. He's so cool in there, and I think there are people are just expecting it to be a, a very one sided affair. Derek Anderson, Derek Anderson is legit. He's legit. He is enormous. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's a funny story because I fought on the same card when Paul Daly and Anderson were meant to fight. Yeah, and. Uh, it was a weird one because I was speaking to Paul Daly and we even put a tenor bet of who'd get the knockout of the night. And yeah. next minute he had, like, uh, we were joking and all. This was all backstage for the weigh-ins. And then next minute he started cramping. 
super bad and had to go uh, get get hospitalized. It just all happened so fast. And yeah. Eric Anderson was left without an opponent. And I said to the matchmaker, I didn't, hadn't really seen Anderson like, <laughs> properly. You know what I mean? I'd seen yeah, Paul yeah. Daly wasn't that big. So I kind of expected the same. And I said to the matchmaker, I goes, look, I goes, if you want me to fight him, if you give me more money, I will, no problem. And then the matchmaker was like, uh, no, you know, <laughs> we'll go with the plan of you fighting the featherweight. And I went, okay, fine. Then I seen him like Anderson, like an hour later at breakfast. I was like, holy fucking shit. He was enormous. <laughs> he so, does like, look I, like I a was, middleweight to be fair. He's but Paige is huge too. He has yeah. these enormous long limbs. But anyway, size aside, we know how talented uh, Michael Page, uh, Michael Venom Page is. And I spoke to people in his camp. I spoke to people who've trained with him, and everybody thinks he's just this amazing striker, which he is. But he's excellent grappling. He's a, a very hard to take down. Also, a lot of people were you know questioning that even after the Paul Daly fight. But he's a, he's very good and very well versed. But Derek Anderson is as tough as they come. Really good knockout power too, and a really good grappler. So. It's a lot tighter than what people think, but I'm always going to go with Venom Page because of uh, he's just such an entertaining fighter. I think he's yep. a, an excellent um, a, a fighter. I think he's going to be a champ in, in Bellator someday. Yeah, he's my, he's my that, pick for this year, champ. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Now, I do think that it, this will be a decision, even though it's Venom Page. I, he did uh, have a decision in his last one. Is that correct? Yeah, and that was a very tough fight against Ross Houston. We know how tough Ross is. Ross took a bit of yeah. a beating in that fight. But what I will say is, I th if I, I think if this one goes past the first round, Derek Anderson takes it. I don't. I, I can see what you're saying, but uh, the last fight, albeit it was a, it was a, it was a decision. It was great to see Page doing the 15 minutes, yeah, doing yeah. the rounds, so For we sure. could see that end of him. Now, one thing that Michael Page said that was really important, and I've been in a, a the Bellator cage, the, the surface is different each time. Uh, it almost feels yeah, yeah. The, the surface in Dublin was like an ice rink I slipped on it a few times however the, the surface in Budapest I had to wear slippers for weeks after because my feet were cut up that bad when I was ground, doing ground and pound and he in his last fight against Houston said he couldn't kick because it was so slippy yeah. so he had to revert back to a lot of hands you know what I mean so <laughs> like we always look at the background what's going to happen I'm sure he's asked what kind of surface is going to be on this one in yeah, Connecticut yeah. you know what I mean because we know what his kicking game is like but um I'm going to go with Michael Page on this one. And I actually want to go with the decision, which I think a lot of people will disagree with. No problem at all. Moving on to the Rofian Stotts and Josh Hill fight. And I know you have a keen interest in this one, being that it's bantamweight and being that these are considered two legitimate contenders up there at bantamweight. Um, Stotts, of course, on a seven-fight win streak. His wins over Keith Lee, Caspel and Lielo Hola. Um, and he's gone in against Josh Hill, who I feel like has been around for absolutely ever. He himself is on a two-fight win streak in Bellator against Eric Perez and Zani. Um, he was in the UFC a long time ago, one and one was in w WSOF after that, two, two and two. He's a guy that never really cut, it, cut his teeth on the big stage, but he's been around that regional circuit for a long, long time. And he is a grizzly vet at this point with 23 fights. Um, I, th I think this is a very close fight I think Josh Hill obviously we know what he's going to try and do to win this fight which is hold on to him for 15 minutes um, mm. but I, I think Stotts is just a little bit more technical I think he's more well rounded and I think Stotts picks up a decision victory in this one you know what I, I was listening to the interviews and Josh Hill thinks that he will knock out Stotts which I don't think will ever ha I don't think will no. happen um, <laughs> he thinks he's the better striker uh, but if you looked at his last fight it was it was kick and move it was it was um, like a, he got to, when he got the takedowns on Perez, he was effective. But his striking game, it, it was, I think it left a lot to be desired. I think Stotts is is very technical, but again, he he, he doesn't have that. I don't killer think he's that killer instinct. Yeah. No, he you know, he finished Cas Bell, but uh, you know my feelings on Cas Bell. He, you know, I don't think he's he's uh, a top ten fighter by any means, and I think he he should be putting the likes of Cas Bell away in one round. To yeah. be honest. That being said, I think it, both guys are very technical. Both guys are very smart and great athletes. Um, so to be who comes in with a better game plan. Um, Josh Hill is a good game planner. Uh, mm -hmm. But what I find, what I think he'll try and do will be a very similar approach to what he done against Perez, which was stay on the outside, land a shot and move. And I don't think he'll do that that well against Stotts, who's a southpaw, who's a little bit lankier, who can counter those low kicks. Faster that, that hands Josh Hill. as well faster hands but also i think he'll have a nightmare uh he'll have nightmares trying to take stats down perez got overzealous with a lot of shots and and hence josh hill was able to go for a reactive double and get it quite easy 
but I think Stotts is going to be a much harder man to take down. I just think Stotts will will use his little bit of length to his advantage, use his well-rounded skills, and I think he'll decision Josh Hill. There's absolutely no way there's going to be a finish in this fight. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> These lads don't finish their dinner, never mind the fights. So it's going to be uh it's going to be Stotts by decision. We are after going quite a bit over time, um. So I know we wanted to get to a lot of other fights, um. But just to mention, you'd have Henry Corrales in the bantamweight division as well, competing against Johnny Campbell. You have Lorenz Larkin competing against Javier Carvalho, who's making a comeback to Bellator after going one and four in his last five. Was mm-hmm. supposed to be on LFA and then gets the uh, the nod to come in and fight with Bellator on short notice. You have your uh, opponent, Eric Perez, is t- taking on Blaine Shutt. And you have Patchy Mix, who was supposed to be fighting Gallagher, taking on Albert Morales. Just quickly, before we get to our, our f- fight of the week, Kind of, what are you most looking forward to? And just give me your opinion on how Perez is going to uh, do against uh, Albert or Blaine Shot. Look, Perez has trained hard for this. I know that. Um, I spoke to him. I've I've told him that we can we can we can fight after he gets this one out of the way. I think he, I think he puts um, Shot away very easy. Yeah. Uh, Shot is coming in at eight and four. I've seen him fight. He's not. Uh, Look, he, he has a long way to go. Perez is much more experienced. He's trained harder for this. He's had a longer camp. Uh, and as a reason, I think that Perez picks up his first win mm-hmm. in Bellator. And I think he gets to finish by, T, by TKO in the, in the second or third. I think maybe third. Yeah, I, I think Perez gets to finish quite easily in that one as well. Um, so, bet of the week. What do you have for your bet of the week this week? I'm going to pick for the crack all... Uh, the bantamweights because I'm a bantamweight so I'm going to go with the bantamweights on this okay nice. I'm going to go with Eric Perez winning which if you asked me a few weeks ago if I picked Eric Perez to win on me <laughs> if I can eat I would you know but anyway yeah, I, I'm going to go Eric Perez to win I'm going to go with H- Henry Corrales making his bantamweight debut versus Johnny Campbell to win Corrales is an animal uh, yeah. and I think that he, he, he dismantles uh, Campbell I'm going to go Patchy Mix coming in and fighting Albert Morales who's coming in on short notice well, Mix is, is a very good fighter, and I think that he'll he'll have his way with Morales. So there's three bantamweights. I'm going to go with Stotts versus Hill. I'm going to go Stotts to win as well. And then I'm going to go with Juan Arcaleta to win as well. So there's five bantamweight fights, all all to win. The only nice. one that's a that's a bit of a question mark, in my opinion, is the Stotts and Hill fight. That's a very yeah. close fight. The rest of my team will be one, one-way traffic. For me, my bet of the week, uh, I am going with Perez as well. I'm also going with Larkin. And I'm going with Archuleta. That's my trio for, and just to win on this week. I'm after eking back towards almost breaking even. So I'm going to try and just get over that line, get into the black Hold before now. I start if, betting if you, again. <laughs> if you're going to be a bitch about it then, okay? I, I, to take take the Stotts Hill fight out of my bet then, okay? No so problem. I have Perez, Corrales, Mix and Archuleta, okay? No Two problem bitches. at all. <laughs> it was a what pleasure. Is it, Go on. It's a, I, I'd urge anybody... Um, to, to get on board and have a look at this. It's on Virgin Media uh, in, in Ireland. It's on BBC iPlayer in the UK. This is a hell of a car. This is the best car Bellator has produced in a long time, and it's only the start of what's to come. A lot of great bantamweights uh, fights, so make sure you check it out. Definitely, and be sure and check us out on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, all the good stuff, and follow us on Facebook as well. Thank you very much for joining us again, Brian. All the best. Thank you.